Blessings to all. Thank you all for showing up. Those of you guys who are going to show up, nobody's there yet. That's okay. Um, so I want to go back to the topic that we discussed the last time I was um, on, and it's how can I be saved? Last time we we didn't get off subject, but we it kind of became a, an opinion piece. And what I would like to do is uh, give us a more grounded, firm, um, scriptural um, basis for what the scripture says about uh, the different aspects that Christianity claims about Yeshua. So one of the things um, that stands out most to me is Numbers, chapter 23. This is a famous verse that we uh, that a lot of people quote. Um, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 29. And it's, it reads like this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? So that in itself, that scripture in itself says a lot. God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Now, if you think about what Christianity actually teaches, they teach us that Jesus is God, right? Which means that God is a man, okay? And because God is a man, he was able to go back on the covenant that he made with Israel. So now God is breaking covenants, okay? God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. So now... If God can become a man, he can, he can lie. And if God can become the son of man, he can change his mind. Okay? And that kind of goes, it's like an automatic thing that happens with, uh, with Christianity. Well, you know, God is no longer looking at physical Israel. That he's looking at spiritual Israel, that's what we're told. Um, and so, um, you know, you don't have to be Jewish to be saved now. Um, and so because God took away the covenant, which was the Torah, God took away that covenant from Israel. OK, so God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. OK, very important. That's one of the first fundamental scriptures. that people should think about when we think that Jesus is God. God is not a man that he should lie. No, the son of man, he should change his mind. Um, if, if God can become a man, he can lie. And if he is the son of man, then he can change his mind. If he can change his mind, and I've heard this argument, if God can change his mind about Israel, what's to say that he can't change his mind about us who are not Israel? So, you know, the teaching is that, oh, you know, our covenant is everlasting, but the Jewish covenant was temporary, or the Jews have a different covenant. Um, it, that theology had to be made up, but the Jews have a different uh, covenant. We're not in their covenant. So that came later. But uh, throughout Christian history, the teaching was, was that, uh, was that, God despised the Jews because of what they did to Yeshua. In actuality, it wasn't the Jews. It was the Romans. Okay, we'll go past that. Shalom, Brother Matthias. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. nor the son of man that he should change his mind. Very, very, very important. Okay, um, Because that implicates that he can change his mind now. He's a man now, right? God became man. So now he can change his mind. Now he can uh, repent or he can uh, go back on his word. 
Um, next scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6. The famous Shema. Shema Israel. Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh Echad. Okay. It says, Hear, O Israel. Yahweh our God. Yahweh is one. You know what I'm going to do? If you got a uh, little bit of on here. You can look it up. Of my phone. You can look it up. Jeez, so much work I have to do. Uh, let's go and okay, so let's go to Blue Letter Bible. Okay, so here is Israel, Israel, Yahweh, our God, Yahweh is one. It's also interpreted as Yahweh is our God, Yahweh alone, as in Yahweh the only one. Okay, so um, let's go to Deuteronomy. Six, wait. Six, yes. Hallelujah. So the word that's controversial here is echad. Echad is translated as one. Um, but echad. means united. It also means first. Okay. Um, let's see what else they have here. It means first. It means someone. It means the only one or one only of its kind. Um, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, and so joined in one, united. And so when it says Yahweh is one, it means that Yahweh is first. It means that Yahweh is the only one. Okay. The only one of his kind. Meaning, does that mean Yahweh is the only God? Okay. So, um, he's the only one of his kind. And in some places, they need they uh, they interpret it as unique. Okay, um, and so that in itself uh, has always been a difficult one for Trinitarians because it says that Yahweh is one. So this is why the Trinity is so important: the three in one. Oh, it's one God manifested in three persons, um, is what we're told. And so um, the way, you know, I used to teach it was that um, then the way that most churches teach it is that uh, there is one God who manifests himself in three ways. It is the Father, who is the creator, it is the Son, who is, um, you know, that God became flesh. And then there's the Holy Spirit that after um, Yeshua left, then there was, you know, his spirit was there. But um, there's, a, there's a problem with that, okay? Um, and this is the thing. And I've said this uh, to a couple of people. If I was to say that there are three persons in me, what would you say? What would you say to me? You call me schizophrenic. Okay. Three different persons mean a person is an individual. 
So three different persons is three different individuals. Hello. Okay. That's not that big, big of a deal, though. Let's go to 1 Samuel. First Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. It says, So Samuel said, has Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Okay. Um, this verse is also um, very, um, very, very much quoted a lot. Um and people say, you know, this is just telling us that, you know, that Yahweh doesn't want sacrifices. He doesn't want sacrifices. Um, he just wants us to obey. And that's the point. Yahweh does not want sacrifices. He never wanted sacrifices. But we don't understand that because of the interpretation that we're given before we read the text. Has Yahweh as great Okay, I have the New King James Version. And it says, has Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? And one of the traits in the King James and the New King James um, versions of the Bible is that when there are added words, the added words are in italic. So it says in the New King James, has Yahweh as great delight? That word, the words as great, is, is just put in there for context is what they say. So in actuality, the text says, has Yahweh delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? So it's a, it's a question. Does Yahweh delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Does he? The prophets seem to make it known to us that Yahweh does not delight in sacrifices. So it makes you think, okay, why are the prophets saying something but the people doing another thing? Who's teaching them? Why are the prophets saying no sacrifices and the priests are saying sacrifices? Mm -hmm. Hey, so that in itself is a contradiction. We're being taught that the, you know, the priests are saying, oh yeah, you know, we need to, we need to do these sacrifices in order to be pleasing to Yahweh. But the prophets are saying, no, the there's no need for, uh, for sacrifices. So sacrifices comes from priests, right? The sacrifices come from the priests. And so what happens is what was done intentionally, you guys know about the documentary hypothesis. Um, I don't need to bring it up because I've talked about it a lot. You can watch my other videos about it. But the last people... Um, the last people to actually edit the the Torah or the Pentateuch or the first five books, the five books of Moses, were the priests. So you can imagine why it is that you hear about the sacrifices first. Where are the sacrifices? The sacrifices are in Exodus and Leviticus. Before you get into any history of Israel, you get into the sacrifices first, okay? That was done deliberately because later on in the prophets, the prophets start to say, oh, we don't need sacrifice. <laughs> Matthias says, that's the reason why I said uh, never to trust the translations. Yeah, because they will add words and, and you will think that, you know, that's what it says. But you have, you have to read the preface first. And it was when I read the preface, I learned that they put words in italicis 
to um, for emphasis or for in, for you know interpretation purposes for understanding purposes. Okay, and so the the uh, the sacrifices are first. And then throughout the prophets, you'll notice if you look at the prophets, every book of the prophets tells us that Yahweh does not delight in sacrifices. Everyone. Isaiah says it in chapter one. Um, uh, Micah says it in what? Chapter six. Um, even David says it in Psalm. Psalms 51. Let's turn there. That's what I was uh, going to go to next. Psalms Verse um, 16, Psalms 51, verse 16. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you do not despise. So even David says that Yahweh does not um, want sacrifices. But because the sacrifices are first in the book, it makes it look like that historically, this is how Christians interpret, interpret it. Historically, Yahweh did command the sacrifices, but either he got tired of them or, um, or what's the other one that I've heard? Either, well, in the Clementine homily, mm -hmm. it says that Moses knew that there was no sacrifices were not needed, but they wouldn't stop. Uh-huh. Because of the hardness of their hearts, Moses allowed it to continue. That's not the way it was. Mm -hmm. In actuality, Yahweh never wanted the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. How do you know this? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 7. This is one of my favorite um, verses. Jeremiah 7? Jeremiah 7. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's go to Isaiah 1 first. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 11. Verse, let's go to verse 10. Start at the beginning of the paragraph. Hear the word of Yahweh, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our God, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says Yahweh. So they were burning sacrifices to Yahweh. Um, I have had enough of burnt offerings and ram, of rams. 